Oh. Upper cut elbows. Hup. Three. Hup. Four. Okay. I was the first woman on the cover of Karate Illustrated magazine. It goes all the uh, way up. Isn't right? the fight over at that point? Power people! It is time to power up with little old me, Tony Horton. And I am very excited today because my guest is a grand master of martial arts. She holds six black belts. She is a world champion in forms and weapons. And on top of that, she has broken box office records in the Hong Kong film industry. She's a bona fide action hero and a Hall of Fame athlete. And I am really excited for when she's gonna kick my ass. Please welcome the queen of martial arts, Cynthia Rothrock. Come on out. <laughs> Oh, Hi. <laughs> I am I'm so excited about this today. You're such a, you are, you're truly an action hero. And you know, we're both in our 30s, which is amazing. I mean, you're just such an inspiration because you know, you've been doing this for a very, very long time. Yes. Right? How many years total? This year I've been studying martial arts for 49 years. 49 years. You just came off a movie, is that right? Yeah, I was in uh, Mexico shooting a film for six weeks. Yeah, and I heard you hurt some people. Oh, well, you know, you it's know, all in the line it, of work. Line of work. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? And then you're developing your own film, and you know, we're gonna get to that in the interview in a little bit. Yes. So right now, in a bit here, we're gonna actually have you put me through the paces. All right. right. So I'm only mildly nervous, but I'm sure I'll do okay. <gasps> so. Check it out. Well, 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 here we are in the most exciting part of my little show on Power Up. This is where Cynthia puts me through the paces. I love stealing good ideas, so I'm sure everything that you do today, I'll put it in one of my workout videos. Uh, but I'll name everyone I'm at after you. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, first thing we're gonna do is warm up because okay. whenever you do any type of physical activity, you should warm up. Absolutely. And I am such an advocate on stretching. I think stretching is so important because mm. especially if you're a martial artist or you, you doing martial arts. Are you still arts, kicking up here? Yeah, I still kick up there, oh you know? Gosh. And uh, it's flexibility is important. So uh, let's first start warming up with the shoulders, all right? right? So yeah. uh, you step forward just a little bit. Okay. And you right take here. your hands and just make big circles as oh, fast as you can. As fast as fast as I can. Oh my God. Oh my God, this is, because I, I usually do it this way. Oh. I've never done that before. Well, and now reverse it the other way. All right. And then I'm going to give you another little uh, coordination one, <sighs> similar to what you did. Am I switching arms? I feel there like that's There you go. Now you're yeah. opening up the shoulders. Now, yeah. what I want you to do is take your hands here. This is also a co little coordination exercise. Mm -hmm. So one hand is going to go forward, mm -hmm. and the other hand goes back. What? One hand's so going to go So one goes forward. forward, and the other, there you, well, almost. Okay. Forward, okay. keep that going. Okay. Now the other okay. one goes back. Yes, there you go, okay. No! You keep this one forward. All right, forward. Forward. Now keep thinking, that's forward, that's forward. 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 That's Don't forward. worry that's about what forward. you're doing. Keep that's going, forward. no, you're going back. Keep that one forward. Backwards. This one goes forward. Forward. And this forward. one goes back. So one is going back and one is going forward. And then you reverse it. How long did it take you to get that? How long did it take you to get that? I got, I got it from the back. beginning. From but the beginning. But people don't do it. Back, 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 and then back. the other one's forward. Forward, forward, forward. Keep forward, keep forward. going forward. Keep going. No, keep going forward. Though. Don't stop that hand. Right. Keep going forward. I'm doing keep going. Forward, now keep going. Forward. Here, let me keep this one going forward. All right. Now you do the other one back. Forward. Yeah, forward, do the other one back. There forward, you go. There you go. Forward, there you go. Forward. Forward. I'm not doing it. I am doing it. I am doing it. I can't believe. I'm now doing reverse. it. Now reverse. Now the other one goes oh, forward. Oh no! Forward. Forward. There you go, now you got it. Yeah. Oh my god, actually. Yeah, see, there you go. You know, it's this, but harder. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that, I'm so stealing that move. I love yeah, that. Yeah, that's I a good that. one. I like that. Mm. That's, uh... And, but by the way, I feel totally heated up. I feel great up in here. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing. Right, now we're going to loosen up the hamstrings. Just keep okay. your legs straight. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever I do stretching, I always tell people uh, posture is important. Keep the posture up, stomach in tight. Mm -hmm. And stretching is at your own ability. So when you feel a pull, when you feel just that little tension, that's when you stop. And I find that when you exhale, that's when you go down a little bit further. So breathing mm -hmm. is important mm -hmm. in stretching. Yep. And everybody's body's different, so it's not a competition. You're just in competition with yourself to try to get Absolute, better, better. Yeah, yeah. So bring your hands together, mm -hmm. and you're gonna come down very slow. And just bring your hands down, keeping your legs straight. Mm -hmm. And just relax and breathe out. Stomach is in. Try to get your back as straight as you can. That's good, nice flexibility. Oh, good. And think of bringing your elbows as close to the floor as you can. Oh. Okay. And just breathing I was just hoping for the hands, but okay. Oh. Yeah, hands are, hands are good too. Uh, just a different way of doing it. Right, things, right? so this static stretch, just let the gravity do its thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Breathing out. And then bring your hands down. Okay. And now what we're going to do is take your right foot and you're just going to come straight up. So kind of think of bringing your chest or your head to your left leg. And your one leg goes up. 
Yep, at your own level. That's my level. Yep, holding it there so yep. you feel it in the butt. I and do. Then bring it down. Mm -hmm. And then your other leg goes up. Oh my god. And slowly yeah. come down. Yes, ma'am. And bend your knees and slowly roll up. Right. And shake your legs out a little bit. I like that one there. That's like one of my favorite ones. Classic, easy. Yeah. I this mean, one? I do that in yoga, yeah. 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 This one here, uh, bring your left foot forward, toes mm -hmm. up. Yep. And what I want you to do is bend your left elbow mm -hmm. and very slowly come down, keeping this leg straight, and try to bring your elbow as close to your toe as you can. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, you gotta keep this leg yeah, straight. Yeah, I figured Yeah, there's yeah. a difference there. Yes, yes. Okay, right. And I don't like to bounce, I like to just breathe, breathe and come down a little bit. Yeah, that's it, nice. Good. Elbow to my toe. And slowly come up. And that really gets a good uh, hamstring stretch. Yeah, a little posterior chain there. Right up the back, yeah. Okay, and we're gonna switch the other side. You'll find one side is a little bit more flexible than the other I am side. I'm discovering that. Yep. yep. There you go. Nice. That side's a little more flexible. Yeah, a little bit. And just relax and breathe down. Good. And so we come up. And I like that there because that also stretches out Gets the that, back that, of your calf, yep, Achilles calf, tendon. All of it. Yeah, yeah hamstring too. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. All right, we're going to do one more. And okay. this one is to open up your shoulders. I like this one because uh, a lot of times as people get older or they're on their phones, mm. their shoulders are always forward. So we got to open it up. So what I want you to do is take your hands behind you and think of uh -huh. like a prayer yeah. position. Yeah, good luck with that one. Okay, now so, I, ha I have a... I have a torn labrum, bursitis, arthritis, and two bone spurs in that shoulder. Does that hurt? So, you like, you can, you can see here, look at yeah. this hand. Okay. I can't even get that hand up. Yeah. But well, I... What I, what I always find that if that hurts... I start like this, I start like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good way to do it, too, right? But right? yeah. well, what you could do is, if you can bring your hands together just, like, even lower down... Okay, does that work or no? Is it your wrist? Yeah. There we go. That's fine. You feel that in your shoulders? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. And then the idea with this one is, is eventually you want to try to get your arms up as close as you can, keeping right. the palms together. And a lot of times, you know, your hands come like this, it means your shoulders are really tight. So mm. actually, you could just work, work on that. I'm going to show right everybody here. what mine looks like. There you go. Now, I, I feel like my right wrist is lit up. I yeah. So. Well, you know, sometimes you have to you have to watch if you have like a shoulder injury, and mm. like I said, everybody you have to be smart and say, oh, I know what good pain is, and I know what not good pain that's is. That's not good. But that's really a good oh. one to open yeah. up your shoulders. Yeah. Oh. And also wrists. Okay, Great. so wrist. it's good. Yeah. So Great. warmed up a little bit. Usually, I'll recommend like uh, ten minutes or at least ten to warm up. But no, I know no. Do you do you, you do you, like on those particular moves? You do one after you do like a sort of a sequence. You do, do you do one or two or three or four in a row or five in a row of a certain thing like that? You kind of go here and then alternate sides or, or yeah. You know what? I mix up stretching. I never do the same routine. I know a lot mm -hmm. of people come in and they'll do the same thing, and your body gets used to that. Yeah. So you kind of wanna wanna shock it. It's like you know maybe like you you're in really good physical conditioning, but I take you out of your element and say, okay, we're gonna you know climb up this mountain like this straight up. And right. Right. We're gonna do it ten times and. Then tomorrow your legs will be sore or the next day because you go it's to a, using different muscles in different right. ways so. or the next day you go to a hot hot yoga class yeah right, right? it's all it's, it's all different. it's all different so yes. you i try to mix up everything and you do. must kill it in yoga i'm assuming I, 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 I like it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it kills me like too. Look at, you. look at her. <laughs> the heat kills me too, yeah. it's good. Okay, so we warmed up a little Technically, bit. Technically I'm warmed up. Yeah, see, now you're yeah, yes. looking good there. Yes, yes. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is just make sure I'm a, you know, I'm a traditionalist martial artist and I'm really particular on technique, that technique is right, because a lot of times, you know, People will be doing things that they see or watch a video, but there's nobody there to correct them. Mm. And if you are doing the wrong technique, you could injure yourself worse yeah. than maybe someone else. So yeah, right. let's do a fist first. Uh, fing your fingers come in all the way tight. Thumbs tuck in, mm -hmm. right? And it's nice and tight, right, like that. Mm -hmm. Good. And that's a good fist. And when you're punching, the to get maximum power is to hit with these first two knuckles. Because if right you hit here. with these two, you break these bones, right? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. maybe, but yeah. it's just not as strong. So, like, see, if I hit you like full fist. Right. right, just even going like that, and then I just hit with the two. You feel the difference? Yes. And I'm not even putting any power. But right. You feel. Oh wow. So basically, yeah. for maximum power, it would be hitting with these, these two. two. Just think those two. Yeah. Right. 
Good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so cool. let's just do a couple punches. So mm -hmm. we're taking a fighting position, hands and guard. Now mm -hmm. different styles have different guards. This is great right. here because say, if I wanted to come in and kick up to your face, oh, right, this hand can block it here, right? <laughs> that was a partial so block. Close. Or if I'm coming in, yeah. it's blocked. So in other right. words, if you were like this, your body's all open Exposed, and you have to bring yeah. it up. Okay. Traditional martial arts are this way, and your body's to the side, so that way you're not keeping your Less front of a surface exposed. Area. Right, you know, you're right. keeping a little more to the side. I love that. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Okay, so for the first punch, we're just gonna do a front jab. From here, mm -hmm. you're gonna punch straight out and then come back, mm -hmm. right? So imagine that your target is directly in front of you and out. That's yep. excellent. All right, let's oh. try it again. Let's go yep. fast. Yep. One, and then back. Okay. And One, two, three, good, four, nice. Five. Good. You can extend it a little bit more. Now, when you're punching, you don't want to hyper extend, right? Right. When you right. bring it out, but you don't want to stop like this either because you're gonna, you're not gonna get maximum power. So you want to get uh, it like three quarters of the way out, in, and then back. Right. Just a jab. Good. Yeah. Now, from the jab, we're gonna mm -hmm. do a reverse punch. Now, reverse punch is with your backhand, yep. but we're gonna put our body into it. So a jab isn't as strong as a reverse punch. Reverse okay. punch, we're gonna turn. Would you also call that a cross? Uh, or a cross as well, or just yeah, that's boxing. Yeah, I would. I would call a cross this way. You know, that way there's more. so many styles. I mean, I can't even tell you how many martial arts styles there are, right. and there's different names. But basically, but based on your experience, thing. this is the way uh, the way you do it. Yeah. This is the way. Yeah, this yeah. is in, okay. in traditional my traditional style. All I do. Right. So from here, you're going to punch, and you're going to turn your body into it, mm -hmm. and I'm turning on the ball of my foot. So in other words, I'm not just punching with my hand. Oh, yeah. I'm punching Dang. with my body so, coming in. So a lot more power here. Yeah, there you yeah. go. And it's a fast one, two, and God, then back. That's your fast. Okay, so let's try that. One, <clears throat> good. And now what I like to do is I always like to have my students keep their eyes on their opponent. Because if you look down, right. you might miss. That's a habit right? that I have, looking down. Why do oh, I look down? You know, down? a lot of people do, do that, down? and I think it's a concentration thing, because right. you're thinking. But, um, but I'm here. It's like, yeah, you yeah. always want to look straight ahead, <laughs> right, wherever your, your target is. And also so you can see, like, on the view of preferable right, too. Right, right. right. So and that's I, excellent, like, yeah, right where you're looking straight ahead. Good. All right, so let's try a couple of those. One. <laughs> Good. Extend them a little bit more. The front one too, the jab. Yeah, the hands. Right. Extend them a little right. more. Two. Yeah. Now your first one is just a jab and then you turn on right. the punch. Good. Three. Nice. Four. Excellent. I'm making grunty sounds. And, and well, I'm getting that's closer. What, that's what I was just going to say. Yeah. I, sounds are good. I like sounds because I, what I, happens yeah. is a lot of people hold their breath. And then they're ready right. to pass out. But right. when you, oh, whatever your, right. your yeah. sound Mine is. Mine is like, for some reason, it's been hep. Yeah? Hep. It so works. What I like. it, but the main thing hep. is, for, eyes up. Eyes up. Hep. All right, there you go. Again. <clears throat> Good. Good. Now, do you know why people shout when they're doing martial arts? It just adds a little fear to the, the opponent. Yeah, that's one reason. Right. You know right. the other reason? Um, I don't know. The second reason is, say for example, you were punching me yes. and I blocked and I countered right. you. Ah. If you're inhaling at that time of impact, your body is going to be susceptible to more injury. Where if you're exhaling, your body is tight. So uh, when they're, you, they're, I'm tightening up all the muscles yeah. to take so, the blow. Right, so then it's tighter. So when you're striking, like that, right. and if someone countered and hit you, you're not going to get I'm prepared for the, for the counter punch. Yeah, yeah, that's still going to hurt, yeah. but not as bad. So that's why you see shouting in martial arts. So when you uh, are hitting, exhale. So if you're doing multiple techniques, you don't want to be going like, ha, 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 ha. So I always do ha, on the right. second one. On the second one. To get control yeah. my breathing, yeah. to tighten up like my Like if body. you're doing like a like a jab, cross, knee, you do it on the knee, right? Be yes. Like, ha, something exactly. like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. Good. All right. So let's try the other side. So oh, no. now, same thing. Now we're going to do the jab, turn, and then back. Okay? One, two, Good. Three, four, five, nice. Okay, I love I love when you do it though. You are like you're here on that on that. What do you call? It? You don't call it a cross. You call it a a reverse punch. Reverse I call punch. It, yeah. You are. Whoa. I mean, you are. Yeah, you from are. here, it's like the block of that. Yeah. Kids the speed. The speed is crazy. At the same time. That speed is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and, but here's an interesting up. thing. Eyes up. Thank Eyes you. up. That's an important thing. I'll let it look down again. Yes. What, I, what I notice is people get older, mm -hmm. right? The balance goes to crap, right? Um, um, their speed goes away, which is this what this is. That's why I love martial arts, because you're, you're, you're teaching 
older folks, younger folks too, yeah. but how to, because they slow down mm -hmm. and their, their balance and their speed and their range of motion, the flexibility. So we worked on the flexibility. Now we're working on that, <clears throat> that speed part, which is, mm -hmm. I look down, give me. Yeah, right. So that's a, yeah, that's a heavy you gotta, gotta watch. I gotta fix that. That's I gotta a bad fix one. Because if your head's down, someone can't Yeah, right, 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 right. Uh, so on, on that there, it's like, I think it doesn't matter how old. I've had students that were doing martial arts at 98 years old, right? Of course, wow. they're taking it down at a lower level, sure, but they're sure. still still learning it. And the thing mm -hmm. about martial arts, you always got to remember the stronger you are, the faster you are, uh, the better your techniques are going to be. So right. you always want to mm -hmm. strive for that in your own capability. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So we're going to talk about kicking now, and right. when you kick, there's some rules on kicking. A lot of times, like people, I always tell my students to kick as high as they can, because if you can kick high, you can kick low. But if you always practice your kicks low, no. you're never going to be able to get high. You want to be ready for those high kicks, so you got to get all this. Uh, right, and on sort of self-defense, you know, you're stronger the lower your kick are, right? That's, you right, know, you right. don't want to get fancy unless you're proficient, right? right. But you should always practice at, at your own height, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, balance is very important, and balance is, in martial arts, extremely critical because when you're kicking, you're on one leg. So if someone blocks that kick, yeah. you can go off balance. Right, so right. a lot of times people will lift up the stationary leg on any of the kicks because uh, it, it it's like, oh, when I get it, I'm gonna kick, this pulls my hamstring. So if I lift my foot up, it's not gonna pull as much, but you've gotta keep that stationary so you leg up down. On your toes, which... No, no, you've gotta be down on your foot, oh, not up oh, on your toes. Oh, okay. yeah. Because okay. then you're like a ballerina. So if you're up on your toe and you kick me and I block it, you're gonna be down on I'm your down, foot. I'm down, I'm Right, so that, that foot is, uh, always stationary gotcha. okay gotcha. so again we're going to have our hands in and mm -hmm. we're going to do first kick which is a front kick right mm -hmm. very simple kick now the principle with kicking is a lot of times you get your power from the knee bending it extends out and then it bends back and comes down gotcha. a lot of times people might not bend that knee as much and just kick out and come down and then mm -hmm. that's not going to that's going to take away from the power of your so kick. it's a knee first then down Right, like so we're, we're going to do front kick with the back leg, okay. so our knee is going to come up, right, into yep. this position here. Now watch when we kick, we're going to hit with the ball of the foot. Now with the front kick, you could hit with the instep or you could hit with the ball of the foot. Yeah. Uh, the instep would be basically if you're hitting into the groin, the yep. ball of the foot would be hitting like into chest. your chest, yeah, face, just, whatever. And so if that. you come over here and give me a foot like you're going to kick me with the front kick and I'm going to hold it, so the neck, yeah, right here, so mm -hmm. straighten your foot. So you're hitting with the ball of the foot. Right there, yeah. See how that foot goes back and you're yep. hitting with the ball of the foot? Yep. Now, if you hit me with your full foot, mm -hmm. it's still going to hurt, but it's going to be more damaging if you just get with that ball of the foot. It's the same thing like if you hit someone with the full fist or you Right, there. right. So I, I'm kind of like semi dorsiflexing my foot. Yes. You want to extend out, right. and how how I is it a, is people, it is it, a, it, it there, is there a, a little push quality to it as well? Not a push. You're gonna thrust it. Oh oh. So this knee is gonna come up, and now watch. If I here's here's me just kicking straight out like that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now watch the hip comes in. So oh. now I'm not. So you're leaning only back using, to a little bit. You're leaning back. So in other words, if uh, watch this here. If I just kick you and I don't put my hips into mm -hmm. it. Right? There it is. Now, just by putting my hip into it, you right. see, oh. I have more distance you got, yeah. and I have the hip into it. I'm not just using my leg for power. Nice, nice, so, nice. from here, mm -hmm. you're going to bend your knee. When I say one, kick out, bend it back, and then come right down. That's the front thrust kick. Okay. Ready? Okay. Eyes up. Mm -hmm. Hands up. One, bend, kick. Hold on. Kick. Got the wrong <laughs> shoes. Yep, and back. Yeah. Good. Again, two. Right. Even if you get a little bit more hip into that. Oh, so okay. More little hip. Three. Yes. Excellent. Very good. Yeah, great. Four. Good. Five. Good. Okay, nice. Switch your stance. Oh, now we're gonna try it the other way. And and the same thing, when you're kicking here, make sure yeah. you exhale on that oh, degree. Oh, up. okay. This side's gonna be weird. Do it well, do it wherever you can. One. Huh. Yeah, that's good. Two. Huh. Three. Huh. Good. Yeah, now I'm warming up a little bit. I'm getting some height to a little bit more height. Four. That's huh. your more flexible leg. Yes, it Five. is. That's what it is. Huh. Good. Okay, so what you have to watch on the kicks, right? Uh, everything looks good. From the kick, bring it back in. So why Great. do I want to bring it back in? Number one, if I kick you, 
I'm in control. Right. I kick you, maybe, oh, maybe I want to turn it into another kick. Right, right. maybe. If I kick and I bring it down, I'm off balance. Uh -huh. So I always kick and then bring it back in. So it's sharp. Back in sharp. Yeah, as Ooh. fast as it goes so up. So kick putting that heel into my butt. So now we're going to do, I'm just going to go over uh, just some hand techniques that you could use. So we have the fist, yep. right? Yep. All right, there's different ways you could use this. We could use this as a strike, as a back fist, which yep. comes down like this and tuck into the nose, <laughs> right? Oh. Like that. Imagine. Just this amount of power can break someone's nose. No kidding. It's a great technique, so wow. uh, easy to use. Um, I like to use this from an elbow. Mm. Coming down on the nose oh, with the back fist, gosh. which is, uh, you know, I know you said you liked elbows. So, yeah, yeah. so back look, look fist. Look at this thing. Look at that thing. Uh, that's see a, that? That's that's good. yeah. I'm like yeah. a half pterodactyl back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know why mine's so bony. It is. Yeah. Bones work for this. Yeah, bones are good. For this. <laughs> bones are good. Right. So on the back fist, one we can come this way mm -hmm. and hit down. Yep. Right, you're hitting now with the whole back part of the fist, boom. Yep. Yep. Or we could use it sideways and come in into a side oh attack. Oh my gosh. Right? Yes. So let's try, uh, say for example, if you come in and someone right. grabs you, you can block it right. and then oh. go right in with a, the back yeah. fist strike. Yeah. It's very simple. Learning self-defense is one of the easiest things you can do. So let's just try our fist. So we're coming in, back fist to the nose, here, yeah. right? And then you cross and back fist to the face, to so the side. So it's here. Yep, that's so my, my opponent's here. Your opponent is here. So I'm here, bang. Back fist, right? And now if your opponent's to the side of you, there. That's a side back fist. Now, boom, again, boom. you don't want to stop it like this. You want to extend it, but not hyper extend for power. Because uh, if I go like that, I don't want to snap it. I want to boom, go in. You again. know exactly where you're stopping or and starting. Or you could do boom. Oh, Jesus. Like that, spinning around to get a little more power. So okay. there's a lot of ways to use that back fist. Yeah, that's a dang good one. it, dang it. Yeah. Another uh, technique I like is the palm strike. It's one of my favorite techniques. Mm, yeah. And what the palm is, is you're hitting with this part of your hand. Right, supported you have by, to by make the... Sure, yeah, bone. in here, yeah, yeah. the bones, right? Yeah, yeah. The bones. You have to make sure your wrist is pulled back tight enough because uh, if you don't, you could break your own wrist. So you gotta pull oh, it back wow. to where you feel right yeah. here. And then your fingers are together. You don't wanna open them because you don't want them you're to not, you're not. You're not here with the fingers? Yeah, you're keeping your fingers together. Straight. And it could come up, hit into the chin. Right. You could come like in, hit straight into oh, the nose. Yeah. You could hit into the oh. chest. You know, yeah, you yeah. could use it coming in, hitting oh, this way, hello. into the groin. Into the, really? Yeah. Back fist. You can there. use double palms oh, coming in to the temple. Effective. And like I said, it's only this much power and to break do someone's own. So right. let's just try it here. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to do it from a horse stance. Okay. And a lot of the times, we'll do uh, techniques from stances. Not that you get out there and be standing in this, right, but right. it's strengthening your legs. So well, remember, well, yeah. Yeah, the lower you get, the better perfect horse stance is your thighs are parallel with the floor. Okay, so let's just try the palm strike, and I want you to aim it right to your, your nose. So think mm -hmm. about hitting right there. Right now, there. this is a power strike, so mm -hmm. you want to do it as strong and as hard as you can. On my yeah. count, ready? One. Yep. Good, shouting out. Remember to bring it up. Two. Hup. Three. Hup. Four. Hup. Five. Hup. Six. Hup. Seven. Hup. Eight. Hup. Put this one back in a fist. Oops. Good. Nine. Hup. Ten. Hup. Good, shake it out. Now. When you brought it back into a fist, it's yeah. little techniques. You brought it back like that. I so did. remember the that fist is hideous. always goes. <laughs> in Don't let me do that ever again. Here, let me do a redo. You were doing good on the other hand, so all right, all right. right. We do five. Okay, Six. five more. Ready? One. Hop. Two. Hop. Three. Hop. See? Damn it. Right, there you go. Four. Hop. Five. Hop. Good. Okay. Now, why is that important, right? Well, number one, it's mind control. See, I yes, love martial arts yes. because your body is doing things that you don't have to think about, like, oh, I have a knife hand, a back fist, a palm, a tiger claw, you know, oh, coming in like this. Your mind can just right. say what I want to do when you do it. So it goes in that position. Maybe you strike someone with a palm, mm. and then you want to come in with oh, a, a punch, your hand's already right, right, in that fist. Right, right, right. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the reason for that there. So that's a palm strike. I love that palm strike there. So good. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you a little bit of a self-defense technique. Okay. And the reason I like to teach this is because it gives you combination techniques and you learn uh, a lot of times maybe one technique might not be enough. And mm. remember, if it's a situation for self-defense uh, and you do something that only aggravates the attacker, you're gonna come back on you. So you've got to right, make sure, right. you know. You don't want to aggravate, you want to devastate. Yeah, you, you want to get yeah. out of there and get there, have them like knocked out. Right? Yeah. So you can go. 
Right. So, have you ever knocked anybody out? Have I ever knocked anybody out? Uh, no, I have not. Oh, wow. Not on purpose, nor... Uh, by accident. Yeah, by accident. I don't think you do anything by accident. Yeah. No. I, I almost got knocked out. I was doing a movie. Uh, it was actually in Yes, Madam. And I was fighting Dick Way, and uh, he hit me in the jaw with his foot and Ooh. almost knocked me out. I saw Ooh. stars. Yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because he couldn't get his, he was supposed to hit me in the head. Oh. It, it was. Got a little low. One of those, yeah. He was not know, working maybe. on his flexibility that Okay, day. so this technique I'm going to show you is very simple, and mm -hmm. it just, the reason is it gives you idea how to do different combination. Now, I could show you like, you know, oh, here, we're doing a back fist, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you get on the street and someone attacks you that all of a sudden you're gonna do a back yeah, fist. That's, yeah. you, so if, this is where the training comes in, where you're repeating, So like, repeating, like repeating uh, for techniques. example, if I grabbed you, you yeah. have 10 things to do. Oh, I think, yeah, there's uh, yeah, right. more than 10 things Because now I just get rid of both yeah, my weapons. Yeah, if you weapons, come in the air, yeah. I could come in, hit right, you right, to the right, groin. Right. I could do the palm strike. <laughs> I could, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of things I could Stop. do. Stop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so many people, that's the first thing they do. And then like their weapons, are taken yeah right you, you could do one of these moves and to, 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 to yeah. them if you wanted yeah, to. yeah i mean the elbows work I, the yeah. elbow you can use the elbow strike to come up you could use it to come oh, to the side gosh. You know, uh there's mm -hmm. like different ways you could, you know oh, just come in like that, that come oh. back that way yeah the, now the when body when, is phenomenal like to be able to defend yourself when you're in a film mm -hmm. right i mean you're literally coming that close right boom i mean it's all very choreographed and you it's start you do it yes. slow at first right you're whatever it is that you're doing. You do it and then slow you pick to up. learn it, right? right. And, and then uh, it depends on where the camera angle is. Like if the camera's behind you, I don't have to be that close, you know? Right, because if, it'll, yeah. If it's to the side, then right. I have to be closer. So it right. all depends on where the camera angle is gonna be. Right. And a lot of times you do get tagged in movies. <laughs> yeah. I bet, yeah. So. Like, yeah, we were talking before, you got tagged a few times. Yeah. But you also tagged. Yes, right, exactly, right, right. it's yes. part of the thing. All, all right. right, so, so say someone comes in, and this is good for women too. And it comes in just with a little grab like that, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, let me show Listen, you lady. Oh, oh shit. So that, that's going to leave block. a mark. That's going to So, what happens here is <laughs> I black and blue very I'm, easily. I'm by coming the way. up. I'm yeah. going to go slow. My yeah. elbows come down and then I'm going to strike you into oh, the throat. Wow. Now, for someone uh, you know, just learning martial arts or even the best places to go, the eyes into the throat, throat, into the groin, groin. because they're the most vulnerable right, areas. Right, you know, right, if you right. want to come in and say, oh yeah, I'm going to like back to someone yeah. into the stomach, mm. maybe they can take it, you know, right, they're right. strong abs. So, I can take it. Yeah, I know you could. I guess it's strong abs there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So hit me there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be black and blue for days. Okay, so let's do this technique here. I just want to do it once yeah. to show you how it works. You're going to bring your right hand over, and now you're using your weight to bring your elbows down, hmm. breaking the hold. So am I here yep. like that? And now look where my hands are. They're pointed toward the attacker's throat, and right. then it strikes right into the throat. Now and this it. is called a spear hand. Uh, whenever you're striking with the fingers, which is a good strike coming into the oh. eyes, right? right, to the throat, you always have to make sure your fingers are together. Together. Because if you go like this, you're going to break your fingers, uh -huh. and it's not going to hurt. So the right. fingers have to be together. So you're coming in here, oh. like just like that. Oh right, my God, right. that hurts just like that. Yeah, so you can imagine, nothing. boom, yeah. right. when you go in fast, how right. that's going to hurt. So that's it's almost interesting. Like, I've never even seen that before. Yeah, so, it's almost like mm, right in. Right. Right. So we're gonna try that. We're gonna try block strike all in one oh, count. Okay. Because so if you block and you don't strike right away, so, then so, I could come in with something else. So, so show it to me again. So to me again. you're stepping out, dropping your weight down, and then you're striking right into right. the person's throat. So here's the block strike. Yeah, that's it. Good. Right. Keep your eyes up. One. Block strike. Good. Mm. Two. Block strike. Three. Right. Now, if, say for example, uh, you know, I'm small and a big guy is attacking me. If um, I go it, like this, yeah. I'm not going to break the hold, right. which if I don't break it, I still could come in and strike, right? right. So the idea is to get the hands Way up. up and the power to come down ah, on the yes, person's yes. hands. More momentum, it. more power. Yes. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, so it's... Here. Yes, oh, good. Right. Okay, Keep. so here, now I just come in, I broke the hole, I strike, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to oh. uppercut elbow strike My goodness. under the chin. Now when you do the strike, you're not going to stop there, it goes all oh. the way up. Isn't right? the fight over at that point, pretty much? 
I Maybe mean, not. You got to be prepared for all occasions. Dang. And this is this is good because this is like one of the traditional Chinese self-defense techniques mm -hmm. that uh, teaches you how to use multiple things. So maybe you go, oh, I don't like that. I just want to come in with this and then mm -hmm. down with the back fist and then a double knife hand and then a hammer fist to the groin. You know, you can just make up your own combinations yeah. and, and you take what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Well, I'm going to have you choreograph my next thing. It'll look, <laughs> it'll look, it'll be more than me looking down and doing that. Yeah, that's right. I'll make it look good. Mm. So I want to try that one more time. Okay, so, yeah. So, so you're gonna and, hands come up. So so yeah. the first move is here. Yeah. Way up is up, yeah. right? And then drop down, it down, up. strike, and now you're gonna step forward and do the upper cut strike with your right elbow. Now when you do this here, you don't want to stop there because remember you're hitting right. and you're following right. all the way through. Yeah, it's that shoulder doesn't work. I'm gonna do that in super slow motion. Yeah, okay. So it's gonna be it, one. So it's so it's here. Break the holes. Boom. Strike into the throat. Strike step all up. And back this down on top of the nose. That's the combination I really like. I like hitting with the elbow because look at my back fist is right oh, in the position. Gosh. Get out of the way of the demonstration. <laughs> to come in and hit. Okay. So let's take it slow. Okay. We're going to go one. So you, you go yep. here. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four, four, back this. Now, watch five. Five, I'm going to come in and do one knife hand with my palm up and one knife hand with the palm down. So what I'm doing is I'm hitting here, and then I'm hitting here. Now, once I come from here, I need power, so I've got to come out here, and i got to come out here to hit. If I just go like that, it's not going to have power. So you, you need all that, all that. Movement. So, let's take it. I know. We're, I can do it. No, yeah, it's not time. It's just yeah, my. Yeah, you know what? It's good because, right? Yeah. Might, and this is kind of like what movies are because I might say to you, okay, you're going to at attack me and this is what you're going to do, right? right? And then kick and you'll have to practice it a couple times couple and then you've got to know times. it. Then yeah. you, well, that, you don't yeah. have time on set sometimes. Yeah, right, right, right. A, right. a smaller budget picture. Right. One, mm -hmm. two, two, three, four, Five. Strike, strike. Now, if you're, yeah, palm up, palm down, you're still with the knife hand, you're just hitting with this part of the yeah. hand, right? And then yeah. in, into the knife hand, which is good. Okay, we're going to do two more moves and then we're going to be done with that technique. We're going to add two more to that. We're going to add two more to that. Golly. So we're going to make sure he's really done. So he's done. He's dead. Especially if I just kick back and go, Cynthia, take him out. I want to get that boy. All right. Okay, yeah. so let's go to the beginning. One, two. Three, four, five. Now six, I just chopped you here, here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn and then strike you into the groin with the hammer fist. Now the hammer fist, your hand is in a fist, but it's hitting with this one. Mm -hmm. So I like the hammer fist. You think of like maybe your hand is like a hammer and coming down and right. hitting so here, here, here. Yeah, so I'm here, I'm turning and I'm striking. Let me see your footwork there. Yeah, from here. I'm forward and I turn. The reason I'm oh. turning is because I'm going to take this foot and I'm going to kick you oh. with that foot. So I'm yeah. setting up for the next kick. Mm. That's like 17 things right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and you can just keep thing. going. You can just keep Yeah, you can just, you know, and that's when you're practicing. It's kind of, I like my students to do different combinations, different hand techniques, different foot techniques. And then you pick out, you know, what you really like, and you would know, oh, this feels good to me on the street, you know, if right. I had to use it out on the street. Because not all techniques, like, work for me that's in martial arts styles, so I take the ones that I really think, oh, yeah, these are what I do, and you, and you just practice right, them, you know? Right, 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 right. Guy comes in, grabs. Grab your son of a gun. One, huh. two, keep your eyes up. Oh, do it yeah, again. Remember, you're going to tap your sword. Okay, I see One, that. two. Three, elbow, four, back fist, five, knife hand, knife hand, six, turn, hammer fist, seven, back kick, and then you're just facing your opponent. He's out, you're not. They're both out. Yeah. Done. <laughs> that was incredible. So, I, that was incredible. Yeah, I, I like the, the combinations of those techniques, right? Um, and like I said, martial arts are about just yeah, eyes up. On my own, you ready? Yes. So here, 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 bang, 
bang, yep. bang, wham. Perfect. Ha! Ah! Yeah. I mean, that needs a lot of work. So that needs a lot of work. Up. I'm going to come in and get the tattoo. Right. Ready? Grab me. Bang, bang. Right. Elbow. Bang. Boom. Snap this. Here. Oh, oh, here. Oh, here. Right oh, they got me in the groin, and then boom, Bang. back in, and I'm done. Mm. Oh. Yeah. And same thing with the back kick, because the back kick, right, you're taking time, you always have to... Got to look at your target. You always got to see your target, yeah. no matter what you're doing, yeah, yeah. you always got to see so your target. So here. you're slightly looking over your shoulder. So I'm here. Yep. Yeah. Wham. Yeah, perfect. That kick yeah. is good. Very nice. My kicks are good. Good because Everything else is a mess, but that was pretty good. Yeah, that was good. Oh my goodness. That's the most fun I've had in a long time. Oh, good. I mean, there was, that was like the synapses in my brain were like, wait a minute, stop, yes, no, more, show me. Really, really incredible. Yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. You, you did are, awesome. You're awesome. the real deal, woman. Unbelievable. Cynthia Rothrock. Wow. Thank you so much. So now we're going to ask you some questions all right. about your life. Cool. You can get all gussied up. We'll sit down and we'll, we'll get talking. Sounds great. We'll see you all in a second for that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Wow, oh my god, jeez. I'm gonna show my wife that and then she's gonna use it on me. That's what I'm <laughs> hey everybody, Tony back with Cynthia Rothrock. Unbelievable, that was a lot of fun. Thank you, I thought I knew a thing or two, but hanging out with you showed me that I, that I have a lot to learn. So I appreciate that. And you, and you clean up really nice. Me, I'm basically in the same <laughs> outfit because uh, I only have one. Right out of the box, here's the first thing I wanna ask you. But what, at what age and why were you so interested in martial arts just in general? Well, I was 13 years old, and I've always been an out-of-the-box kind of person. You know, even today I am. And anything that is unusual or different, that's what I wanted to do. And my girlfriend's parents owned a health club, and on Sunday they would clean all the equipment. So we would go down and we would play in the big exercise room, do cartwheels, flips, and all this mm. stuff. Mm. And then one day they came in with their karate uniforms on, and they started practicing. And I was like, wow, what is that? First of all, I was like, I like that uniform. What is it? You know, and they're saying, well, we're studying martial You wanted to wear those geese. I yeah, guess. I yeah. saw that. I was like, that's cool. Mm. And uh, they said, well, we're learning how to defend ourselves with our hands and feet. And at that time, I didn't know what martial arts was. I didn't know anything. And I thought, how cool is that? So I went home and I told my mom, I said, uh, I want to study karate. And my mom was so used to me, even at a young age, of doing baton, guitar, organ lessons, you know, dance lessons, everything. Gymnastics, you know? too, I'm guessing, based on your uh, actually, going Actually, I on. did that after I became uh, a, a, a champion in martial arts because I then I started doing things that would help my martial art abilities but right, uh, right. yeah that was uh, my mom signed me up at the Scranton Karate School. This is back in Pennsylvania. Back in Pennsylvania. When, when you were a wee lass back in those days. That's right there was only one martial arts school in the whole town. Well, now how far was that a drive for your house? We had to, did you have to go to Kingdom Coming back to get to it or was it nearby? So you didn't uh, to... It was probably about 20 minute drive. Oh. Yeah it wasn't bad. Nice. Yeah. Now, now what was your very first discipline? when you were learning? Uh, was... my, yeah, my first one, uh, my first black belt was in Tung Sudo, which is a Korean style martial arts. And, and it was Tung Sudo that was at that, at that facility near your house? Yeah, actually uh, my instructor, uh, Frank Chinovich, he studied under Jay Shul Shin, who Chuck Norris studied, and they were in the military together studying at the same time. When did you come out to Hollywood, ta -ta 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 Hollywood and begin to sort of take your skills you know, that you learned back then. Did you make that trek like I did? Uh, my trek was in 1980. Go west, young man. When, when, did you, when did you go west? Yeah, I think I'm just a year ahead of you on everything. Uh, I, I came in 1981. And wow. the reason for that is uh, there was a uh, A-rated tournament, which was the biggest tournaments in the world at the mm. time in New Jersey. And I went and I competed there because I was competing all along the East Coast. And I beat the person that was number one. And everybody was like, who is this person? You know, that Whoa. she beat the number one ranked person, you know, in North America. And uh, I met uh, George Chung from the West Coast Demonstration Team. And he says, you need to go to all the tournaments. Like, you know, you're phenomenal. So I said, all right, I'm going to do that. So I went, uh, the next one was in California. So the West Coast Demonstration Team said, well, why don't you train with us and you could stay for a month in this woman's apartment right next door to the school. So I did. I went out for a month. I competed. I won the championships there. I knew now that my goal was to compete professionally. 
And I told my mom, I called her up, you know, I was at, at this point, I was like, like my late teens. And uh, I said, late teens, you're still a teenager. Yeah, I said, I'm not coming back. <laughs> I'm staying in California. Mm. And my mom wow. was like, No, you can't stay there. It's gonna fall in the ocean. <laughs> Funny, I had those same conversations with my mother. When are you coming home? Uh, that's really wild. So you were a teenager. Um, so how did you transition? How, how many disciplines did you know about that, that point? Like you, did you, because you have what, six and all, seven and all? Yes, uh, I, uh, I actually, uh, well, I first started in Tung Sudo, and then I saw Pai Lam Kung Fu, a Kung Fu school opened up in our area. And uh, at that time, martial arts were different. My instructor said, you can't do both, pick one or the other. Oh. So mm. that's why I left Tung Sudo, because I wanted to do weapons. I was always enthralled with uh, the Chinese weaponry. So I started that, and then I competed in New York City, and I saw uh, this guy, Benson Lee from Eagle Claw, and I was like, oh my God, I want to learn how to do that double-headed spear form. So I sought out his teacher. Doesn't everyone. I remember I told you I'm out of the box kind of person. Yeah, that was like, my dream is to learn this double-headed spear form. And uh, I would commute to New York. Now we have a, a distance. So I would travel every Sunday for a couple of years to New York City to study uh, Eagle Claw. Still as a kid. As well, a kid, now, yeah. now, yeah, I'm getting older, you know, a couple of years, you know. But I, so you, you were in Pennsylvania, went, went to California for that competition. And then went back home and you were still yes. back and forth to New York. And, okay. and, and then uh, I, uh, yeah, I guess I, uh, when I was studying at Eagle Claw, then I wanted to learn Wushu, right? Which was a main, this, whole, this first time anybody's seen Wushu from mainland China. And the instructor was on the West Coast. So then that was, that was actually one of the reasons, too, I wanted to go to California. Hmm. So competition, uh, training, and then later on, movies fell in my lap. <laughs> What was it about you as an individual, like your personality and your tenaciousness and your your desire to get better? What, what like where did that come from? Was that something you're, you had in, inherently, or was that something you got from your folks? Or I think it's through my martial arts training that this came mm. in, and it's interesting enough. When I first started, right, uh, it wasn't what I expected. You know, uh, I couldn't shout, I couldn't get these turns. You know, everybody, all the guys are shouting in class. You know, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like. <laughs> Yeah. You know, afraid to shout, right? right. And uh, and then that's um, the only thing I got. I got my you got the shout. I got my power sound down. <laughs> the rest of it, you know, based on what you did to me earlier, I gotta I got more. Well, mine was probably like, huh? you know, I was uh, initially. You know, yeah. I was intimidated by all yeah. the men in the class, and someone had me. Uh, they said, try to break this board with the front kick because I just learned the front kick, and it was a half a board. And these are the thick boards. They aren't like the little thin, flimsy boards that people use now that you could break when you blow on them, right? right. They were really hard. Right. And of course you can't break a half one. I have never seen anyone do it. So I almost broke my toe and uh. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I'm like, I don't know, maybe this isn't for me. And, and I told my mom, I said, I want to quit. I don't like this. It's not what I thought. I was all bruised up. And uh, she said, well, I signed you up for four months. You're going for four months. And during this time, my instructor gave a speech on how losers, uh, you know, if you're, you're, you're a quitter, you're a loser. And I was like, oh, my God, he's that talking to me. That sounds like your classic and if old school training yeah, technique there. Yeah. Old school. And if you're bad at this, it's your attitude, you don't practice. And I started thinking, and I, I said, you know what? It, it is a bad attitude. You know, I hate push-ups. I was like thinking, I'm like, so now I'm going to, I'm going to love these push-ups all because they make me strong. They make this and that. And it just changed my whole attitude. And the minute I changed my attitude, I started getting better wow. and better and wow. better and skipped a couple ranks in it and I think that today has always uh, given me the drive to all no matter what it is do the best I can do amazing um, now of the six disciplines I got that right do you have a favorite what, what's what okay question one which one of the which one of them was the hardest to kind of get down and which one was your favorite um, okay, I, I've liked them all. I've taken something from mm. every style. Uh, I think I'm very glad that I started off in Tung Sudo because it gave me a really good kicking base. So that's where I got uh. my kicks. Uh, I'd have to say the Chinese style, though, I, I favor a little more because, again, I like weapons. And uh, that's, you, you like know, weapons. I've always, yeah. Cynthia, don't get in her way. Cause she, <laughs> Whips, she, swords, she, staffs, spears, dang. you name it. Amazing. I like it. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Who were some of the action stars and martial artists that you looked up to when you first started your career? Well, uh, the first uh, movie that I remember seeing is when I was studying Eagle Claw in New York City. After mm. training, 
our teacher would take us to Chinatown and we'd see movies. And the first movie I saw was Snake in the Eagle's Shadow with Jackie Chan. So oh. I was enthralled with him. I how old was were you then? like, yeah, well, now I don't know. How old was I? 20s, maybe? 20s. Yeah. yeah. And I, um, I, I just thought he was phenomenal. And I would think of the moves that he did in movies and go home and try it. Like, I just love the fact that he would take a, like a telephone and use it as a steel whip. And, you know, right, right. he just took any kind of apparatus around and used it. And I love that. And mm. uh, he became my hero. And it was funny because uh, when I went to Hong Kong in uh, 1985 to do my first film, I got to meet him and mm. almost got to do a movie with him. But he got hurt during that time. So they put me in a movie with uh, what, another actor during that mm. time. But I would have to say him. And uh, then later on, in, you know, I became familiar with Bruce Lee. He was already passed on, but right, right. I became more familiar with his. And I started, like, you know, seeking out more martial art action movies then. But and and you've, you've worked with Chuck Norris, is that right? Yeah. I have not. He's a friend of mine, but oh, no, I have you're, never you're worked You're friends, with, though. Yeah, That's no, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ever spar with Chuck any time? No? I actually did. I worked out with him uh, at his house when he lived in Reseda. I went there to train with him and my good friend Richard Norton. Um, what was the first movie that you were in? And what was that feeling like? Were you nervous? Were you like, oh, I got this? Or what was the role? Yeah. What did you do in the role? And what was the name of the first movie? If you, uh, three questions in one. Yes. But. Uh, first movie was Yes, Madam in yes, Hong Madam. Kong. Of course, of course. Uh, 1985 with Michelle Yeoh. With Michelle Yeoh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Who just got an Academy Award. Exactly, Whoa. exactly. That's and, a pretty cool company. Uh, it was right her there. third film, my first film, her first action picture. So uh, we were kind of a support team because it was brutal. It, the film took eight and a half months to shoot. We were bruised. We were doing these oh. crazy stunts. And I didn't know, I thinking I'm going to do a period film because I saw, you know, Snake in the Eagle's Shadow, you know, right, and they were right. all like old time. And when I get there, uh, it's funny. And then I saw, you know, Enter the Dragon and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to Hans Island. You know, I'm by myself. I don't know anybody, you know. And um, I get there and they go, no, you're going to play Cindy, right? My name. Yeah. Uh, you're a cop from England. And, and I thought, wow, you mean I'm not going to have like long black braids and have razor blades in them and twirl them around? So I was a little disappointed because that's what I was okay. thinking. Kind I was of Uma Thurman-esque. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of that. Yeah. But I had, uh, I had no idea of filming. I didn't know. And I got to the set and they wanted me to say my lines in Chinese. And never, I was a hard time to say them in English in because I was so nervous. You're, you're an American first. girl who's playing a, 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 a cop from London, and you got to do it in Chinese. Yeah, but here's the, here's the funniest part is I, I started, and it was something like yutting, hama, something, and I start going yutting, hama, 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 and they go, good, you know, and I go, no, 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 that's not good. I said, hama, 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 hama. They go, uh, well, we're filming with no sound anyway, so it doesn't matter what you say. And they just dub you in later. They just dub everybody. They dub everybody in later. Oh, wow. And it'd be funny because I'd say, well, why aren't you dubbing your own voice? And they're like, because I'm an actor. I'm not a voice actor. You know, so it was a whole net. We never had a script. I never knew what I was shooting. Uh, I didn't know. Eight months of that? I didn't know what the movie was about completely <laughs> until I saw the midnight showing, right? Like there, there'd be a scene like, you know, uh, the director who's a great director, Yoon Kuei, said, uh, take your badge and put it on the uh, desk. And I'm like, okay, anything else? Just take the badge, put it on the desk. Two translation, because most people didn't speak English. Right. And then when I saw the movie, I was getting fired and I'm putting it on my desk. And like, you know, um, and I'm like, that would have helped. <laughs> That would have been a simple thing you could have told me. Yeah, and, and I, I, this is even worse. Like they said, look up at the ceiling. I was doing this movie called The Magic Crystal. And I said, what am I doing? And I go, ah, doesn't matter, just look up. So I'm looking up and the ceiling has holes and I'm counting the holes. I see the movie, we're getting invaded by aliens and that's what I'm looking at. I'm like, that would have been an important thing to wow. tell me. Wow, wow. Yeah, so it was funny. They, you know, ha they had their methods, I guess. It was, yeah. uh, it was a great place for me to make mistakes and which I did because it, you know, yeah. didn't matter. Now, how many movies, do you know how many TV shows and movies since to huh. this total that you've been in? Uh, if I have to guess, I'd say 65 to 70. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And still working today. Still working today, yeah. Now, we were, we were getting our makeup on, not that either one of us <laughs> need it. But we were talking about some of your new projects right yes. now, stuff that you're working on. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, I uh, actually have a couple films slated this year. I just finished one in Mexico, which uh, I haven't got the word yet to promote it, but it's going to be a great action picture. Uh, but I'm excited. I'm doing my own film. After doing 70 films, uh, I finally decided to do my own. I'm one mm. of the writers, the producer, the star. And, and you're going to know why you're looking up. 
Huh? <laughs> you're going to know why you're looking up. You're going to know everything. I will know yes. everything. I will be able to say, yes, I can have my eyelashes on in this movie. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> no. I want my eyelashes on. It's I want fine. my I'm eyelashes on. Yeah. There you go. It's right. called Black Creek. Yeah. It's Black. a uh, Western. Can you tell us a little? Oh, it's yeah. a Western. It's a Western. And it's funny because um, when we were figuring out, okay, what kind of movie do you want to do? I said a Western. And everybody was like, a Western? And I'm like, yeah, because there's really no, other than Annie Oakley, no really famous female gunslingers that can really fight. And uh, I said, I want to do that. So it started around that. What's the storyline? You know, we, we did that. And it's actually one of the first, uh, it's like a trailblazer again, when the first martial artist, come, mm. woman, you know, doing her own picture, getting her own cast. I have a phenomenal cast. Everybody mm. uh, that are my friends just said, yeah, we want to help you out. So it's almost, people are saying it's like the expendables of martial arts uh, Western movie. And Is what's your it? part? What do you, so you're direct, are you directing it? No. No, I'm okay. not, no, no, right. no, no, no. That part I'm producer doing. and yeah, and pr producing and acting. Um, yeah. And uh, I have a great director. Uh, Are you, you're the lead, I'm assuming. Yep, the lead. Yes, yep, the lead. And uh, it's it's uh, we we went on Kickstarter and we had a huge success. We're the mm. second most funded Con action picture in the history of Kickstarter. So, Congratulations yeah, on that. And, and, That's and, not easy. And, and this whole, my whole film has been through crowd fundraising, you know? So it's like, and I'm trying to keep all the fans included in it. Uh, we have a lot of people that are making cameos in it or awesome. doing little fight scenes in it. Uh, you know, and it's, it's great because they're saying you make my dream come true because I've always wanted to be in an action picture. But you know how that someone isn't really going to get that chance. It's very small percentage. So you're putting, actually putting fans in the movie to have their butts kicked here and there. Yeah, yeah. And, awesome. and I'm lucky because I'm going to have training days for them and stuff, but they're all, all the people that opted for the incentive to, you know, get hit by one of the action stars uh, all are... Uh, well, Marshall, if, if you got if you got a room for a guy that wants to be kicked in the head, I'm your man. <laughs> All right, I'd be love to do it. Uh, this might be a little impossible to narrow down, but do you have a? Favorite scene, like your and all the things, seventy movies. That's a lot of scenes. Yeah. Was there one scene where you just are super proud of, or something that was really cool that you did? Uh, you know, I don't know if it's one scene. I just did. Uh, I did a Hong Kong movie called Blonde Fury, also slash Lady Reporter, and we just did an interview on it for the new release. Uh, for that's the, the one DVD. where the, you died and they brought you back. No, that was writing wrongs. That was oh. writing wrongs. But oh. yeah, that's a, yeah. The, I. All the leads that's die kind of, in it. That in and of itself is just kind of amazing. Yeah, that, yeah, they yeah. all we all die in it, and I thought it was great because I just saw Live and Die in L.A. and I thought, wow, I think it's William Peterson or I'm not sure the actor, but he mm. died in it, and I was in shock at the end, right? right? Like that after all he went through, the guy comes in and shoots him, and I was like, I love that. Well, the the Asian culture did not like us and Yun Vu getting killed. So I'm shooting China O'Brien and I get a call to come back to Hong Kong and reshoot the ending where we live. So now there's two versions of Writing Wrongs, wow. one where I die and one where I live. And I think on one of the DVDs, you, it, it includes both endings. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, the people didn't like it. They said, no, we don't want her to die. We don't want her to die. Yeah. That's very cool. Wow, yeah. you don't, that, how often does that happen? That's amazing. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite film, just a film in general that you just thought? I, I think, uh, well, for uh, American movies, my favorite so far is Sworn to Justice, more for the storyline, the acting. And I'd say it has to be either Writing Wrongs or Blonde Fury for the action, because uh, even now we shot those films like, what, almost 40 years ago, and I still look at it, and the action is still brilliant, still mm. holds up today, you know, mm. and... Um, yeah, I'm really proud of those uh, those fight scenes. Uh, generally, in Hong Kong action cinema, foreigners are usually the villains, right? But you weren't. You know, you were you you know you were not cast that way. Um, so, what does that kind of say about you as a based on? Yeah, I mean, uh, I I think. Uh, like, how you, did they let? Yeah. How did you get in that like that? That's got to be. Yeah. Really well, here's hard. the here's the interesting thing is when I was on the West Coast demonstration team, we got a call from uh, the editor of Inside Kung Fu, and he said, "There's a big Hong Kong director here. He's looking for the next Bruce Lee." And uh, the guys were phenomenal on our team, so that's why they called him and said, bring them all down. We're in San Jose. Bring them all down to L.A. And uh, the team leader, Ernie Reyes, said, what about the girls? And they're like, yeah, you can bring them, but they're looking for a guy. So I came down, and on the audition, I, I did some form. I did fighting. I did self-defense. I did my double hook sword form. And Corey Yoon says, I want the girl. So it changed his mind, you know, that he was looking for a guy. It was the weapons. It, 
it, my double hook swords because you know I hooked them together and I hit the ceiling and the ceiling started falling down on my head when I was doing it. So maybe that was it. You know, wow. I just continued with the ceiling falling on my head. Uh, true story. But uh, then you have to find out that he cast two women as leads, even back in that time, to be leads in action. Right, he was right, very creative right. and innovative, and uh, I, I thank him for that. And at that time, I didn't even realize how rare that is, because I don't know about filming. I'm just thinking, yeah, you know what? This is just, I thought I would do one movie. Hmm. I said, maybe someday I'll be, on the, I'll be on the poster and I could show my children, look at your mom was in a movie. I didn't know it was the first movie was a huge success and that I would, that would be the rest of my career for the rest of my life. That was kind of the, the launching point for you, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, I was thinking yeah. that's just one of another little crazy things I could say I did in my life. You know, it's interesting too, like when I look back, you know, at some of the things that at that moment, just, oh, this is a cool experience. I don't know if it'll lead to anything, probably not. But it did almost every time, like when I, you know, I met a celebrity that I was training, getting them ready for a tour or uh, uh, some movie. Like I've Sean Connery was, uh, was a client of mine for a bit. And uh, yeah, you don't think about it at the time, but then you look back and go, wow, that's the reason why I'm, I am where I am now. Yeah, you know? and I, th I think things just, uh, when you're on the path of doing what you're supposed to be doing, things just fall in place and you just have to listen to them and take those chances. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hello, power people. It is I, Tony Horton. You might know me from some of my past workout programs and my sports supplement brand, Power Life. Now, I've trained some of the biggest stars on the planet, from rock stars to action heroes. But between now and when I'm in my hundreds, I want to live large, I want to take charge, I want to feel good. And you can do it too. Oh, but Tony, I've never exercised a day in my life. Look at yourself in the mirror, and if it's not going the way you want to go, I'm here to help you do it, because I can. Anybody can do it. And if you're willing to take charge and feel good about your life, I don't care if you're 40 or 50 or 60 or 70, it can be done. All you got to do is train, and you've got to consume the right things to fuel your body so you have the energy and enthusiasm to show up day after day day after day. Trust me, it can happen. Do you really want me to flex? Were you all, it sounds like you were very different than me in the sense that you were a go-getter from the get-go, right? You don't hear that expression. I just made that up. I love that. I'm going to use that more often. <laughs> but me, I was very apprehensive when I started. So was there something in your DNA or something about your parents that, that allowed you to be that kind of person? Or you were just always like, I wanna try this, I wanna try that, just because you were that kind of a curious kid. Because a lot yeah. of people who are, have your level of success, um, and I'm one of them, where it was just not interested, it took a lot of coaxing and learning and very, you know, some serendipity and all these different things that got me to the point where I am. I mean, I had a speech issue, so I couldn't even string a sentence together when I was a kid, right? Um, and I was, the, I was two left feet, non-athletic, just wasn't, right? And so I just assumed that I'm gonna be a guy with a speech impediment who's not athletic. And I had to do all kinds of things, jump through all kinds of hoops, do all kinds of personal development, you know? And then eventually, little by little, but you didn't have that issue so much, did you? Yeah, you were just uh, attack. You know, I, it, I attacked what I was doing, but I didn't attack the industry like, oh, I gotta go after this job. I'm not like that. I right, don't go out right. and toot my horn. I don't go to all the Hollywood parties. I don't go and try to do the networking. I just kinda, I love life and I love the things that I do, you know, and um, I, yeah, I've never, I've had people like actor friends say, oh, I hate the weekends. And I'm like, why? And they go, because I can't get any business calls done. You know, and I was like, oh, that's kind wow, of sad, you know, for bummer, me. Yeah. You know, but I, even today I do extreme adventure. I challenge myself, mm. like uh, hiking to uh, Everest Base Camp, you know. You've been the, to the base camp at Everest. I, I've done, I did uh, Mount Fuji. I did the Patagonia trek. Um, wow. I, I trekked wow. from the base up to Machu Picchu. Uh, you know, I, I just like, I think I like challenging myself and I find things that, you know, make me happy. And, yeah. and, that, and that's I what mean, I'm I like that too, but it, did, it took me until my 40s to be able to sort of go, oh, all right, I'm going to sort of push the envelope here a little bit. But I think what it is, is as you get older, you find the things that make you happy right, and you realize, right. I, I realize it before and even now, that if there's something you want to do and you don't do it, you know, you're not promised tomorrow, you have to do it. Exactly and that, right. that's kind exactly of right. like how, how I live, you know. Uh, yeah. I just started scuba diving and I'm an, a, an avid scuba diver and I'm having withdrawals because I haven't, I didn't do any dives since January, you know, and I'm like, I want right. to go diving. Right. Well, you know what's interesting? One of the reasons why this show even exists is because it's, it's important to have folks like you on to show, you know, 
like I said, we're in our mid-30s, <clears throat> plus a decade or two. But, you, you know, there's <laughs> a lot of folks that are, are a, in our mm -hmm. age range that are kind of done. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they go, well, you know, what else can I do? Maybe I'll walk the dog or, you know, maybe I'll go for a swim or something like that. But you're a perfect example of somebody who, you know, born in the 50s, like me, who's pushing as hard as ever, managing to get unhurt, right, because of your flexibility and mobility and yeah. different kind of training techniques. And your curiosity, I, what I love is that your curiosity is to kind of continue to grow. Because, you know, I mean, we're at the second half of life, and there's a lot of people, I mean, I know people from high school and college that are, I just look at them now and go, oh my God, they can't physically do anything. And so yeah. they're in this kind of horrible mental and emotional state as a result. And so the goal here is to inspire folks at home to go, you know what? I mean, if Cynthia and Tony can do it and, you know, they're born in the 50s, then maybe it's worth my try because I was born in the 60s or 70s, you know what I mean? So it's just really impressive, yeah. you know, who you are still. And as, as I talk to you, as I get to know you, not only now, but before we were talking, you know, you didn't do the networking, you didn't do the parties, you didn't have to because your skill level was so high. You were so talented, you were so good at what you were doing. Nobody else could compete with you. So it's like, uh, yeah, we need this. We got to hire Cynthia because she can do all this stuff that nobody else can do. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and like with me, my thing was humor. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, oh, he's adding humor and fitness together. That's not right. It's supposed to be serious. No, because exercise is hard and people don't need serious. They need a, they need a laugh here and there. You know what I mean? And so, you know, anyway, yeah. you rock. And, and um, you know what? I think as, actually, as you said that, I think one of the things that keeps you young is, you know, laughter. You know, I, I like to play practical jokes. You know, mm. I, I laugh a lot. You know, I find things funny. People make fun of me, like, in a good way, but I could laugh at it, you know. Right. And, yeah. and uh, same thing, you know, I like to have comedy and, and things that I do, too, as well. And it's one yeah. of the things, you know, you got to do. And, and, you know, when you were talking about age, I get so many people that say, oh, I could never do that. And I'm like, well, maybe you can't do this, but you could do a version of it or right. just find things, you know. Right. It, you didn't it, go to the... You didn't go to the top of Everest. Yeah. But you, I mean, that's 17,000 17, plus feet at yeah. the base camp at Everest. Yeah. I mean, have you done Whitney local? Uh, I have Whit not. I want to. You'd I love want to, to do, do it. The only, yeah, and that one in Kilimanjaro that I, I want right. to do as well. Now yeah. my thing is I want to dive in all these different places. Yeah, you want to go down, not up. Now, yeah, right? and I, so. you know, I, uh, you know I, I do white water rafting and bungee jumping and, yeah. you know, all that kind of crazy stuff. And I, it scares me, but I think I, I got, I'm like an adrenaline junkie. I, I like that. I think you are. I get yeah. scared, but once I get done, I'm How like, How many oh times my God. have you bungee jumped? I t actually, <laughs> twice. And uh, the first time was I was in New Zealand and I did off the Harbor Bridge. It's big bridge. down there, jumping. It, that's the bridge. where they yeah. said it originated. Yeah. Now there's a, there's a thing where Africa's saying, no, it originated here. But anyway, the New Zealand people say it originated down there. Right. And I'm like, I, this is the first time I did it. I said, I have to do it off the bridge, you know? And I was scared, you know, that it was on the feet, you know, and yeah, jumping down. Yeah, not on the waist, on the feet. Just yeah, says, oh. you know. And it's, that, that river's getting closer and closer and closer. Yeah, and absolutely. Going. But I loved yeah. it. I loved yeah. it. It was a fun, you know, I'm glad I did it. I had one opportunity. It it was in Vegas in the desert out of a hot air balloon and I totally blew it off. <laughs> yeah. But I've jumped out of a Chinook uh, at 17,000 feet uh, uh, parachuting. Which oh, was okay. Pretty wild. Well, you know what I did? <laughs> not, not to say anything. When I was in New Zealand, I was with a woman that was traveling with me and uh, she wanted to jump out of 20,000 feet. And wow. that is like, you can't do that in America. Only like in a few countries you can, right, you know, you right. have to have the oxygen and stuff. Right. So I said, if you do the, if you do the uh, bungee jumping with me, I'll do that, right? And uh, that was intense, 20,000 feet. Yeah. I don't know if I yeah. ever have to do that again, but. But uh, you know, I mean, in my experience, I didn't want to do it, didn't want to do it. And there was a bunch of people who were doing P90X, these young astronaut wannabes. You know, they were in Hawaii on top of a, of a volcano and they were there for a year and their celebratory jump was out of the Chinook. And they were all doing P90X in fake outer space, you know? And they said, we want you to do it. And my wife, we're doing it. And I went, no, we're not. <laughs> and she said, it's six months from now. I go, we'll forget about it by then. And then month, month, and another one came. And then we, all of a sudden, I'm in Hawaii. I'm in a jumpsuit, and, I'm a, and that Chinook opens up. And there's all of Hawaii down. It's so small when you're up that high. <laughs> and we did a backflip out of the back end. And when I, halfway through the backflip, the Chinook, which is those two, two, right? It was that big in about a nanosecond. It was just like, wow. Yeah. Like that. Oh. And then they pulled the chute, and you could whisper. It was, the, and then I, when we landed, I went, 
let's go again. You yeah, know I mean? exactly. You right. Do it again. You faced your fears. I love that that saying, face That's, your fears, yeah, exactly right? Exactly right. And then once you do and you realize, hey, I didn't get hurt, you know, and right. uh, you know, I'm, I'm tethered to hopefully to someone that knows yeah, what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, you I know? had some golden I had a golden knight with me. Yeah. Who knew what he was doing. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I I love all that kind of stuff. And 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 you know, I just I, I try to be an inspiration to people, you know, to say, yeah, you know, you you know, don't have a defeatist attitude, you know, and I say, people always say, I'm too old, I'm like, that word is not in my vocabulary, ever. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> you know? Well, I always say, aging is for people who aren't willing to put the time and energy into slowing it down enough so that you can enjoy your life, right? Yeah. So, yeah, right on. Um, many of your fans consider you to be a pioneer for female action stars. How has it been to see the evolution of, of female leads in TV and, and motion pictures. Yeah, it's because it's, you are yeah. you are at the t tip mm -hmm. of the spear for that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you know it was a whole different time. Now that you know, at that time when I was doing movies, especially then I came back and do American movies for a while. It was like I had to be the the partner of the guy, and then. I would do fighting, but he'd have to come in and save me. It was right, like a woman right, can't be right. the lead, you know. And uh, and it, you know, I did. The China O'Briens were very successful. The Lady Dragons were, and so then people started accepting uh, more female lead back then. And now it's better. It's still not as as great. I don't think it ever will be that we'll have that many people because you right, know whenever like right. something comes up and it doesn't work, you know, then they go, oh yeah, then they yeah, yeah, see, I that. told you so. Yeah, I told you, yeah, you know, right, right, but. Right. Uh, it is a different world. There's a lot more women, a lot more stunt women, you know, doing uh, stunts, you know, doing mm -hmm. uh, martial arts. A lot of big actresses are doing action pictures, you know. Uh, so it's a whole different time, and it's, it's kind of sometimes I think, geez, I wish it was like that when I started. I know, you but know? somebody has to be the first. Somebody has to be the pioneer. It, exactly. Somebody has I, to open up those doors. I was the first woman on the cover of Karate Illustrated magazine, and the editor said, no, women and minorities don't sell. And thank God that I had an innovative uh, editor, you know, and he was going, uh, you know, no, he pushed for me, and it sold out. And hmm. then again, though, it took years and years and years, you know, for another woman to be on the cover, right, you know? So right. it's like, yeah, it works, but, right. you know, it's, it's, uh, it's changing attitudes a little bit at a time. And you were there, and you yeah, did that. Yeah, I was there in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, still uh, there. <laughs> and you still, yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. right? You got a movie coming out, and you're going to shooting a movie soon, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just came off one, yeah, just two days ago. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yeah. Now, what about bumps and bruises? Do you yeah. get pretty broken bones, bro knocked out, broken noses? Uh, how much of that has oh, happened in your career? Well, in Hong Kong, I had a lot of injuries because they right. had me doing dangerous stunts. And I was like, I'm not a stunt not person. A stunt I'm woman. a martial artist. Right. We don't train to jump off of two-story buildings into cardboard boxes <laughs> with a fake baby in our hand and high heels and an explosion going behind me. That is true. That was my scene. Oh my Right, and I'm like, you know, I don't train for that kind of kind of stuff. Wow. <laughs> but you know, yeah, they're always when you do action pictures. I always say, you know, especially when in Hong Kong, like you have to be a tough person to do right, that because right. you know I got hit in the nose with a, a sword. My nose swole up. Tears were coming out of my eyes, and the director goes, "Oh, your nose looks better now." <laughs> you know, swollen up. Um, and, and, you know, you can't complain. You can't be a baby. You have to just push through it. Yeah. And uh, even in this last film I did, like, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, it's finally healed up. But my whole hand was all swollen and up mm. and stuff. Because, you know, when you're seeing, when you're doing a really good action, it's really fight, yeah. good fights. It's yeah. not like, you know, yeah. fake, fake. You know, some of them are. And I think yeah. that's what makes a good action picture versus one that you know the, and it's funny because a lot of action pictures i i'm like it's my least favorite genre to watch i'd rather watch a comedy or a horror movie right right it's because some of the time i'm too critical i'm going oh that didn't work or that wasn't <laughs> that foot was in the wrong position right, or right. that you know you know i'm too critical but when i do see something that's great oh my god i, I yeah. you know i love it jackie chan stuff yeah i like that john wick i just saw john wick four i loved it you know i mean so much the fun. action yeah it yeah, was very incredible. good that was amazing you're amazing we were, we were born in the 50s. We're amazing. She's a little bit more amazing than I am, a little bit more skilled. But thank you for being here. I'm a year older. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's it. She's wiser, a year older and wiser for sure. I can't wait till next year. Uh, again, really amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks for showing me how to get her done when it comes. Ne my next martial arts routines, uh, they're going to look different, thanks to you. Um, but before we depart, how can folks at home find you? 
Uh, I'm very uh, dominant on on Facebook. I know a lot of people go Facebook, but I think that's yeah. We're, yeah, you and me both still on the Facebook. Uh, it's Cynthia Rothrock official. I'm on Twitter. I have a YouTube channel, Cynthia Rothrock channel, and uh, I try to really uh, to talk to my fans as much as I can. So I'm probably very active, you know, and I'm mm. because I'm grateful because it. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for them, so I put a lot into it. So you can uh, reach me on any of my social medias. Awesome. Again, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So when you're, when you're learning, right, you have to learn these forms, right? right? These patterns, like the one you just showed me, uh -huh. right? So is there a, it, would you mind just doing one, maybe one of the first ones you ever learned or something sure. like that? Sure. This is uh, the first form in the White Dragon style. Really? I'll show you that. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go over here. Okay, it's it's pretty simple. It's about 30 moves and 30 moves. Yeah, but and watch the different hand techniques. So okay. You can see. All right, great. Okay. All, right. All right. I'm gonna go away. That would be the first pattern that you would learn. And what form is, is basically you have different attackers attacking you. So like the first move here, blocking something over the head, right. blocking here, counterattacking with the punches. And, and if you want to see more great episodes with amazing guests like Cynthia, click right over there. So uh, Jesse's going to move back and forth here. And then we're going to move these little ball numbers here. So as you can see, maybe you can or not, she's straddling the, the uh, poles with her index finger and um, middle finger. And now the, the little red balls that she's on right now spin. Yeah, they're super spinny. Aren't they super spinny? Um, I'm going to ask you a question. You ready? This is the rapid fire. Uh, 